In this video, we're going to take a very broad view of organic structures and look at the ways we can arrange electrons around atoms in organic structures to achieve an octet of electrons. These give rise to what are called the generalized building blocks. The octet rule tells us that the total electron count around an atom tends to be eight in organic molecules. From this rule and the fact that electrons travel in pairs in bonds and in lone pairs, we can reason to the idea that there are a limited number of ways to arrange electrons around atoms in Lewis structures, and we call these the generalized building blocks. These are the building blocks of organic structure that either satisfy the octet rule or represent valid exceptions to the rule, such as the six electron building blocks we looked at in the last video. And before going through these, it's important to note a couple of things about the way these are drawn. First of all, we haven't included formal charges, and the reason for that is we're leaving the central atom as a generic X atom. Depending on the identity of this X atom, the formal charge will vary, and we'll see that in the next video. And secondly, because this entire system is based on the octet rule, which is grounded in the total electron count around an atom, each single line that you see, which seems to indicate a single bond, is equivalent to a non-bonding or lone pair at that position. This is because from the perspective of total electron count and the octet rule, a single bond counts as two electrons and a lone pair counts as two electrons. When we start enumerating the particular building blocks in the next video, we'll add different numbers of lone pairs to these single bond positions in, for example, the tetrahedral building block. And that will give rise to different particulars that are really instances of the same generalized building block. It's convenient to classify the generalized building blocks according to the number of electron pair domains at the central atom. Four electron pair domains at the central atom gives rise to this tetrahedral building block. And this is the only way to achieve four electron pair domains in an organic structure. When we get to three electron pair domains, the situation gets somewhat more interesting because we can either have a situation where the atom has an octet of electrons involving a double bond and two single bonds, and that's what's shown on the left here. Or we can have a six electron situation where there are three bonds or lone pairs to the central atom for a total electron count of six with three electron pair domains. To achieve two electron pair domains, we can have either two double bonds at the central atom, and these must be double bonds, or we can have a triple bond and either a single bond or a lone pair. Both of these have total electron counts of generally eight, although if an unpaired electron shows up at one of these positions, which we won't deal with until much later in the semester, then the total electron count can also be seven here. And finally, there is one important building block that involves only a single electron pair domain, and this is the building block associated with hydrogen atoms, which we should recall at this point represent valid exceptions to the octet rule because they only need a duet or two total electrons to complete their valence shells. In the next video, we'll look at particular examples of these generalized building blocks, and our goal in the long run is actually to go in the reverse direction from specific structures to instances of these generalized building blocks. This is the basis of the structural analogies that we looked at in the first video.